Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hi everyone, today I will introduce to you a new version of user-friendly dynamic project management system prepared by gshares.com using Google Sheets. Major features of this project management system can be seen on the screen as well as in the description. Now coming to the project management system, this system is divided into three sections. Project Setting section, Task Management section, and Project Timeline and Synopsis section. Each section can be seen on the individual tab of the Google Sheet. Now I will start from the Project Setting section. This sheet will be used for setting the settings of the project management system. Usually this sheet will be used at the inception of project and will rarely be used later. Therefore, after updating the settings, this tab can be hided. First field is of the project name, where user will set the name of the project. Second field is of project manager, in which user can pick up the name of the manager from the drop-down list. The drop-down list will have the name of all the staff which are added in the staff names field below. Next two fields are of project starting date and project ending date. Now what these two days do is that they set up the timeline of your project timeline section. Let me show you practically what it does. Our current project starting date is 1st October 2019 and ending date is 15th of November 2019. Now let's move to timeline and synopsis tab. In this sheet, Timeline of project can be seen in the row 2, 3 and 4 and the starting date of timeline is 1st October 2019 and ending date is 15th of November 2019 which was already set in the settings sheet. Now coming back to the settings sheet, let me change starting date to 10th of October and ending date to 31st of December 2019. Now let's move to Timeline and Synopsis tab to see the changes. As you can see, Timeline starting date is changed to 10th of October and its ending date is changed to 31st December 2019. This feature of project management system makes it dynamic and you can easily use it for short term and long term projects. Coming to the next field of weekend days, as different countries and companies have different weekends, Therefore, user can change it as per their requirement. And the last field in this sheet is of staff names. As user will assign each task of a project to a staff, so this field will be used to add all your staff name. User can add as many staff as he wants by simply adding them below the staff name field. That's it for the project setting section. Now coming to the task management section. This section shows the record of existing tasks along with their status and details. This section will be used by the admin for three purposes. First, to add a new task. Second, to remove a task. And third, to update the existing task. The task structure used in this project management system is three level drill down structure. That means that each parent task can have a child task and that child task can also have a grandchild task in it. Task structure diagram can be seen on the screen. Let's start by adding a new task. To add a new task, first of all, user will have to select any cell in the row below which he wants to add a new task. For this demo, I will add a new child task of parent task with WBS number 3. Therefore, I will select any cell below that parent task. I will select cell of row 14 to add a new task below this row. After selecting the cell, I will click on the Add Task button on the top. Once the button is clicked, a pop-up window will open showing the task addition form. In this form, user will have to select the type of task which he wants to add. When user clicks on any one of the options, more fields will appear based on the option selected. If a user wants to add level 1 task, that is a parent task, then he will click on the level 1 parent task button. If he wants to add a second level task, that is child task of parent task, then he will select 
level 2 child task button and if he wants to add third level of task that is child of child of parent task or in other words grandchild of parent task then he will select level 3 grandchild task button for this demo let me add a level 2 child task after that user will have to type the task description and then he will choose task owner from the drop down list this drop down shows all the stuff which user added in the staff field of settings sheet next he will select the start date of the task from the calendar and then he will select the ending date of the task from the calendar and at last the user will click on the submit button to add the task after submitting user will have to wait shortly to add a new task in the system if task is added successfully then user will get an alert of successful submission click ok to close the alert newly added task can be seen on the sheet let me explain what changes have this entry made this task is added on the row 15 first cell shows the task status of this task which is incomplete right now and once tasks get 100% completed then task checkbox gets ticked automatically second column is work breakdown structure number parent child and grandchild tasks have different number pattern to differentiate them system have auto generated this number itself based on the entry next column is of the task title which was typed in the form system automatically insert dashes at the start of the task to show the task type one dash represent that it's a level one parent task two dashes represent that it's a level two child task and three dashes represent level three grandchild task if a user adds a parent task, system automatically changes the row color of parent task as can be seen in the previous added parent task. Task owner selected in the form can be seen on the next column. Not only this is added here, but also level one, that is parent task of this child task is also updated and have included this task owner in it. So parent task automatically gets updated whenever a new child or a grandchild task owner is added in any of its subtasks. Then next two columns are of start date and end date of the task, which also gets input from the pop-up form. Parent task of this child task also gets affected by these dates. Parent task automatically sets the starting date to the earliest starting date of its child or grandchild task and ending date to the latest date of its child and subchild task. Next column is a completion percentage which the task owner will update from the staff sheet which will be discussed later in this video. Next column is of duration task which will be calculated automatically showing the total number of days which task will take including weekends and excluding weekends. Apart from this sheet the form entry will also change the timeline and synopsis which we will see later in this video. That's it for the task addition. Now coming to the task deletion process. If user wants to delete some task then he will simply click on any one of the cell of the task which he wants to delete and then he will click on the remove task button and after that he will have to click yes to confirm that he wanted to delete this task. As can be seen on the screen, the task is deleted. And finally, in order to update a task, user simply have to go to the row of the task which he wants to update and edit the field as per his requirement. That will update the task. That's the end of task management section. Now coming to the last section of this sheet, that is timeline and synopsis section. This is totally automated section and gets updated based on the task management sheet which we saw earlier in this video and also staff sheet which we will see later in this video. Now on the top first row is the synopsis section which is showing summary of the project which includes project completion percentage, project pending percentage, total number of tasks, total completed tasks, tasks in progress and tasks yet to be started. Below the first line is timeline section. 
On the left side, that is column A, B and C contains list of all tasks and subtasks with their owner names and completion percentage. And on the right side of that is the project timeline with the Gantt chart view. Header of timeline section have three rows. First row is representing weekly timeline of the task, that is week number on the specific point of project. Second row shows dates and third row shows days of the week. As in the project setting, we selected Saturday and Sunday as a weekend, that's why we are not seeing them here. Also, we are seeing this header column with different color. As it's November today, that's why it's highlighted. It will automatically update it based on the current date. Gantt chart will also get updated automatically based on the task management sheet and staff sheet. For example, we have added a child task with the title Lorem Ipsum previously in this video. That's automatically added in this sheet as can be seen on the screen. Incomplete task is shown in light cyan color and completed task is represented in dark cyan color in the timeline. And it gets updated automatically based on the entered completion percentage. As our task is new and incomplete, therefore we are seeing this in one color. For the ease of users to see maximum timeline on the screen, they can zoom out the sheet and can simply hover over the end of each task timeline or on the first column of specific task to see its details. The last thing to explain in this section is of this update dates button. In task management section, I have showed how to set starting and ending date. There is another easy way to select the task starting and ending date. In project timeline section, user will go to the row of the task whose dates he wants to update. Then in the timeline of the task, user will simply select the cells according to his required date range and after selecting them, user will have to click on this update dates button. This will take a bit time and will then update dates in task management section as well as highlight relevant cells in the project timeline section. That's it for the project timeline section. The sheet on which we worked was for admins. However, to share that with the staff may result in lack of control, manipulation, chances of errors and mistakes. Therefore, another sheet is prepared for staff, which can be seen on the screen. This sheet is a replica of timeline and synopsis sheet, which, was, which we saw earlier in this video. However, in this sheet, staff cannot change anything except for the completion percentage of the task. This sheet will be used by the staff for two purposes. First, to see project status and details. Task owner can use filter option to filter tasks related to him by clicking on the filter button and then selecting his name. Also, user can filter tasks based on the task description and completion percentage using filter button in the column A and B. Second purpose of this sheet is to update the completion percentage of the task. Each staff will use this sheet to update completion percentage of task which was assigned to him. Once the staff updates this percentage, timeline will update automatically and will change the color according to the completion percentage. For this demo, let me update the completion percentage of the task which we added earlier in this video with the title Lorem Ipsum to 50%. Shortly, the color of this task timeline will change and 50% of color will become dark cyan and 50% will remain light cyan. As you can see on the screen, colors have updated. That's the end of this project management system. More features like sending automated emails to task owners, messages on Slack, integration with Google Calendar may be added in the upcoming versions of this system depending on the user's demand. I hope you must have liked this project management system. In case if you want to get more details on this system or you have any other query, then feel free to contact us on our Facebook page or you can email us on info at gsheets.com. Thank you.